temper cuts can modify the game in hill country quite significantly. But do you know how slope, LIDAR, and historical imagery can reveal where mature bucks will travel next? Not all clear cuts are created equal. Some draw whitetails like a magnet, while others are just empty ground. Today, we'll use some mapping tools to find the difference. Today, we're going to e-scout 6,500 acres of hill country timber cuts. Elevations here run from 1,400 feet in the bottoms up to 2,200 feet on the secondary ridges and 2,400 feet on the tops of the main ridge. That's a 700 to 900 foot climb, enough to make thermals the deciding factor on where to hunt. Using slope angle shading, LIDAR, and historical imagery will map out potential stand locations, evaluate access along logging roads, and see how timber cuts of different ages shape whitetail travel. First, let's look at the size of this parcel and understand what we're up against. Drivable roads trace the outer boundaries, while old and new logging roads weave through the interior. Many of these roads are cut into hillsides, forming natural benches and edges. When determining where to start on a new piece of land, the first step is to identify what topographic features naturally funnel deer and offer security and bedding cover. If scouting reveals excessive human disturbance like cut branches, boot tracks, or cameras, those areas get deprioritized. A landscape with diverse timber cuts creates countless edges that shape deer travel. Logging decks and road systems connect feeding, bedding, and security cover. With seven to 900 feet of elevation change, thermals will dominate deer movement especially in the creek bottoms. On windy days, wind in the bottoms needs to exceed 12 to 15 miles an hour in order to overpower the thermals. Conifer-covered slopes will provide consistent bedding and cover. We'll map out potential stand locations, factoring in both wind direction and thermal flow. In regions with consistent timber harvesting, start roughly 20 to 25 years before the latest aerial imagery work backwards to reveal how vegetation has regenerated over time. Each timber cut is outlined, labeled by acreage and harvest year, and exported from Google Earth. Once imported into Caltopo, these layers reveal the relationship between the terrain, vegetation age, and access. By combining slope angle shading, LIDAR, and historical imagery, we're not just looking at maps, we're revealing deer travel behavior across 6,500 acres of hill country. Each layer tells part of the story. Once the timber cuts are dated and you've imported them into Caltopo, it's time to study terrain features like thermal hubs across the ridge system. These low points where multiple ridges converge in one spot are where thermals pull and scent swirls. Mature bucks can gather a lot of information here in short order. You have to hunt them only when conditions line up perfectly, and that's not often. Deer that bet on terrain features of secondary ridges or edges of thick, grown-up timber cuts eventually drop down into these hubs, but we want to predict how they move between them and how long-distance travel routes play into the picture because bucks in the big woods do a lot of moving around, especially during the rut. I want to find sign, big generational scrapes, multi-year rub lines. Then we'll see what terrain offers and find some pinch points. We'll mark everything on the map and we'll back out until conditions line up. For me, that's a cold day, a nasty misting cold day or light rain cold day, or a clear and high cloud cold day in late October to around Thanksgiving where I hunt. Starting in the Northeast, I'll focus on the 2008 timber cuts versus the newer 2024 cut. The 2024 cut is too open. The regeneration of a new forest is only a year old and won't hide deer. Deer will avoid it in daylight, but the 2008 cut offers thick, nasty cover deer love. The edges of those older cuts are perfect bedding zones and transitional routes. Deer bedding near those edges likely travel mid-slope towards thermal hubs. Old logging roads that follow contour lines form benches. Great places to start looking for rubs and scrapes. Let the sign tell you how mature bucks travel in a given area.
When mapping deer movement, eliminate terrain they typically won't use. To highlight these steeper areas, I create a custom terrain shading layer in Caltopo, 21 to 90 degrees, colored black. When turned on, steep terrain stands out instantly, showing where deer won't likely travel unless pressure is high. Each hill country region is a little different. You might choose 36 to 90 degrees if you live in West Virginia, for example, but it's a custom layer for you where you hunt, so choose what works best. At the end, I'll leave a thumbnail for you to check out this video where I show you how to create these custom layers. After creating the custom layer, go over here and turn it on. And as you can see, the map shows all the steep areas in black. Edges of steep terrain often hold big rubs and historical sign. When you find clusters of old and new rubs in one area, that's your confirmation. It's a recurring buck travel route. I plan to focus on the drainage below the 2008 cuts, along the edges of the 2024 cut, and just below the black shaded steep terrain. If I can find a solid generational scrape on one to two degrees slope on a flat spot in the thermal hub, that's icing on the cake. Once we confirm sign in the northeast, the next step is determining how bucks move west over the ridge and down into the next thermal hub. It might be straight up past a LIDAR marked skitter trail or further south up the edge of another steep drainage. Boots on the ground scouting will confirm which path they actually use. Try to do attention to detail scouting trips in January through April and document everything. Old rubs, new rubs, droppings, trails, and bedding at all elevations. Once you mark it all on the map and zoom out, deer travel corridors will reveal themselves. As promised, I've picked out a couple of stand locations. I've chosen one down in this thermal hub, and it's based on this bluff gap that connects the trails that are up higher in elevation. The only way they can get down is through the bluff gap. Uh, they turn and walk along the edge of the steep stuff to get up here to this generational community scrape. There's a trail that runs through the steep stuff over here from the west. And then we've already seen the steep stuff trail that runs along through here coming down from these 2008 timber cuts where buck beds are located on the edges and on the downwind side for a northwest wind. Over here, we've got several benches that have trails that come down into the thermal hub as well. So I picked the stand because there was no trail below me over here to the southwest, uh, and this very steep edge that runs down through here, plus uh, the creek that joins it will help pull thermals in the afternoon if we turn on sun exposure layer in November at 4 p.m., we can see that from 4 p.m. until dark, the thermals will be pulling away from where we expect the buck to be coming from. And this is really the most challenging spot to beat is from this bluff gap coming down through here. A couple spots that I picked out are up here because of all the steep terrain and you've got an old logging road that makes a bench that connects a bunch of benches over here to the west with what we found uh, when we found the buck beds over here in the edges of these 2008 timber cuts. So I feel confident in a spot like this with a dropping thermal or a north-northeast wind hunting below where the bench crosses this drainage or hunting above it with no wind and a rising thermal. This would be a spot that I'd probably get here around 8 a.m. and hunt through the middle of the day all the way until dark, and I might jump down and just hunt off the ground below it uh, once the thermals start dropping. But th those are the options for what I see in this area. By combining Caltopo's slope angle shading, shaded relief with built-in LiDAR, Google Earth's historical imagery, and boots on the ground sign, we're not guessing anymore. We're uncovering the truth about how deer move across 6,500 acres of hill country with varying ages of timber cuts. 
Setting up your maps like this will help you see how the deer are using the landscape. I hope you have a great hunting season and we'll see you next time.